Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. of David, and the slaughter there was great on that day, 20,000 men. The battle spread over the face of all the country, and the forest claimed more victims that day than the sword. Absalom happened to meet the servants of David. Absalom was riding on his mule, and the mule went under the thick branches of a great oak. His head caught fast in the oak, and he was left hanging between heaven and earth, while the mule that was under him went on. And ten young men, Joab's armor-bearers, surrounded Absalom and struck him and killed him. Then the Cushite came, and the Cushite said, Good tidings for my lord, the king. For the Lord has vindicated you this day, delivering you from the power of all who rose up against you. The king said to the Cushite, Is it well with the young man Absalom? The Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord, the king, and all who rise up to do you harm, be like that young man. The king was deeply moved and went to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he, as he went, he said, Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I, would I had died instead of you, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join me in praying Psalm 130. 
Out of the depths I have called to you, O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to know what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one, mem of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from your, you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Jesus Christ according to John.
There's not usually much of a connection or responsibility that we feel to the other people going to the movie with us. I mean, if you spy on us, you're fine. You're gold, right? That'll do it. But you're just a bunch of people who happen to show up at the same day and same time to see a movie and be entertained. But it's different in the church, though, isn't it? It's different. We're not just supposed to be a bunch of people who happen to show up here at the same time to be entertained. No, we are a Christian community. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. We do have a responsibility to one another. We do worship God. We do follow Jesus. Paul talks a lot about church and about Christian community in his letter to the Ephesians today. He writes this letter from a prison cell, perhaps with the help of a secretary. And the letter doesn't go to just the Ephesians. It goes to several different churches because, you see, Paul wants to make sure that while he's locked up, that Christians know who they are. He wants them to know that they are who Jesus they were. I'm going to back up a minute. All right. <laughs> Paul wants them to know who they are. Paul wants them to know who Jesus is. Paul wants the people to know what it means to live in community. He wants the people to know how to be the church. And in our reading this morning, Paul says a lot about how Christians should be in community together. Every verse in this passage is rich with meaning and has a lot to tell us. But I want to focus on two verses this morning. The first is Ephesians 4.32. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. And the second verse is Ephesians 5.2. Live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. And we can sum them up this way. Be kind, forgive, live in love. That's be kind, forgive, live in love. So first, let's look at be kind. Now you may not know this, 
although some of you might. But kindness is the virtue of the month in October for our Episcopal school. In our Episcopal school, we have a virtue each month, and October's is kindness. And so each October, I share a story with the kids about when I was in middle school, and this is what I tell them. There was one night when I was getting ready to go to bed in eighth grade, brushing my teeth, stuff like that. And I was thinking about my life, and thinking about school, about my friends, and how I kind of wanted to make more friends. Maybe I would be a little more popular. How could I make more friends? And then it came to me. It came to me. What if I was nice to people? <laughs> I'm not like, what if I was nice to people? Because, you see, although I was a pretty good guy overall in middle school, I wasn't always nice to people. In sixth grade, I was one of those kids that kind of got picked on until seventh grade, where I discovered that a funny comment at someone's expense, well, not making me popular, but at least getting out of the cell. You know, St. Paul says, let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up. Well, not everything that came out of my seventh grade mouth was useful for building up. During a poker game on a field trip on the bus, I once accused a kid of cheating, and he was. Nobody gets that many aces. But I certainly didn't have to say that his dad probably cheated in college to become a principal. <laughs> <laughs> what if I was nice to people? It was like a light bulb went off. I worked hard to be as nice to people as I could. I smiled. I was friendly with the other kids in school. I, I started sticking up for the younger seventh graders on the soccer team when I was in ninth grade. And life got much better. In fact, I wound up on the same baseball team with the poker cheater, and we became really good friends. <laughs> we became really good friends. It was great, right? I did make more friends. Kindness matters. Kindness makes a difference. But you know, the reason to be kind isn't just to make our lives easier or to make more friends. And even if it was, it doesn't always work that way, right? Sometimes kindness is hard. Sometimes people don't always meet kindness with kindness. A better reason to be kind to others is because who the people around us are and who God created them to be. Dietrich Bonhoeffer in his book, Life Together, reminds his readers that everyone they encounter has been created by God. The book was first written for a seminary community. Bonhoeffer reminds his students to not speak ill of their fellow seminarians. He says, where this discipline of the tongue, taming the tongue, watching what you say, where this discipline of the tongue is practiced right from the beginning, each individual will make a matchless discovery. He will be able to cease from constantly scrutinizing the other person, judging him, condemning him, putting him into a particular place. That now he can allow the brother to exist as a completely free person, as God made him to be. As God made him to be. Yes, as God created them to be. Look around. Look around. It's okay. You can look around. Right? Each of you, each person you see has been created by God. So be kind. Speak the truth in love. Say what builds up. Be kind. Forgive one another. Live in love. Okay, so now forgive one another. Paul says in the church that we are called to forgive one another as Christ has forgiven us. As Christ has forgiven us. That's the key. How did, how does Jesus forgive? That's the model for how we're to do the same. You know, there's all kinds of stories in the gospel where Jesus forgives. Jesus forgives Zacchaeus, the tax collector, and commends him for planning to make restitution to all whom he's cheated. Jesus forgives the woman caught in adultery and tells her to sin no more. You remember the story in Holy Week. Peter denies Jesus three times, denies even knowing him in Jesus' darkest moment. 
Yet the risen Jesus forgives Peter and opens the way for Peter to say, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus even gives Peter a new ministry saying, Feed my sheep. Yes, Jesus forgives. But it's not a forgiveness that denies the wrong. It's a forgiveness that says, yes, we will be in relationship again if we can. And here's how we move forward in love together. It is forgiveness rooted in truth. Rooted in the truth that we cannot continue to hurt those around us and rebel against God. But it is also forgiveness rooted in the truth that Jesus has paved a path ahead for us. There are no lost causes with God. You know, the world isn't always kind. There's conflict at work, at school, in our neighborhood. Sometimes even at church or in our own families, people hurt one another. Sometimes people forget that we are brothers and sisters in Christ created by God. But we can forgive one another like Jesus forgave. We can insist that all the bitterness, anger, the sins that hurt us stop, and then explore the ways that Jesus calls us to move forward. Even if that means in a change in relationship, it's not easy. But Jesus is with us every step of the way. Be kind. Forgive one another. Live in love. Now live in love. Paul says, live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Now, for some of you, if that sounds familiar, you're not crazy. It's another translation of our offertory sentence we say each week. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Live in love. Walk in love as Christ loved us. Once again, as Christ loved us, here is he. You know, love can mean a lot of things. But it's loving as Christ loved us that shows us the way. So how did Christ love? In the Gospels, we see Jesus loving everyone, taking time to reach out to Samaritans, taking time for women, for children, for the rich, for the Romans, for the Judeans, for religious leaders, and for the poor. Jesus loves them. Jesus loves them all. Jesus loves us and the whole world so much that he lays his life down for us on the cross. There it is. Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. The love that we are called to have for one another in Christian community is a deep a deeper love, a love that is sacrificial. So no, coming to church is not like going to a movie theater. It's more than silencing your phone. We are not just people who happen to show up at the same place for some entertainment. In baptism and Holy Communion, Jesus, who is the bread of life, binds us all together. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one hope in God's call to us. We are the body of Christ. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. And C.S. Lewis in his sermon, The Way of Glory, says, There are no ordinary people. You have never talked to a mere mortal. There are no ordinary people. You have never talked to a mere mortal. And later he says, Next to the blessed sacrament itself, your neighbor is the holiest object presented to your senses. So yes, look around again. Look around again. Christ resides in the people that you see, the people around us. There is holiness all around you in this place. We are the body of Christ following Jesus as a holy people. So be kind, forgive one another, live in love as Christ loves us. Amen. Amen.
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. prayer as found on page 5 
in your service leaflet. Let us pray. O Lord God, our lives and works are in your hands. With all that we undertake, you are present with us, guiding us on the roads ahead. Now we find ourselves in a time of transition. In your mercy, give us your holy wisdom and guidance so that we will be transformed to the people you would have us to be. Grant us open minds, listening ears, and loving hearts. Be with Lauren, our rector-elect, and her family as they prepare to join our parish, and with us as we prepare to welcome them. All this we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, peace. Peace. Peace, Jim. Well, once again, good morning and welcome to St. Martin's. We are glad that you are here today, and once again, we have with us uh, James Fitzpatrick, who is uh, um, helping us out on the organ today. Thank you, James. We're so glad that you're here. <laughs> Just a few announcements, and really the theme is, is that we're going to start gearing up for fall. The program year is coming. We have the blessing of the backpacks, backpacks, tote bags, briefcases, whatever you would like blessed for a new year of um, school or college or work. Um, and we'll also be um, saying special prayers for teachers and students. That's August 25th at the 10 a.m. service. Um, St. Martin's Fall Kickoff, our um, Christian ed programs um, for young and old and parent groups, Sunday school, youth ministries, that's going to kick off on September 8th. And registration for the youth and children programs are live. And, you know, if you've got your smartphone, we've even got the QR code right here in the bulletin. You can just go ahead and... Uh, register those kiddos for um, Sunday school or uh, your young people for youth group. Um, summer meet and eats continue. As I said in the epistle, I love the meet and eats. They're just great. It's a great way to connect with people. And it was wonderful. Even, even last week, it was pouring down rain outside. John. Yeah, slight change in the meet and eats. Okay. Okay, well, this week is rib night. So <laughs> I have been to rib night. You do not want to miss rib night. It is the, the, the best ribs you can get for a free will $5 donation, let me tell you. So yeah, come out this Wednesday at 6 o'clock for some great ribs and a, and a great time. Um, and then we have some other announcements. Oh, um, uh, we're, a reminder to keep pledge current. Um, things, you know, bills keep coming in the summer, and we can be generous in the summer too, even if the bills weren't coming due. Uh, we can be generous in the summer, and so I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for all your generosity and gifts um, to St. Martin's. Um, and then, uh, let's see, we've got some outreach uh, things going on. There's the um, uh, second collection, and then SPAN. SPAN's getting ba into back-to-school mode too, um, back to school snacks are the theme for SPAN, so if you have some back to school snacks um, to bring in um, to support SPAN and the people who need those, uh, please do. So once again, so glad that you're here for worship and 
walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of your creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed, and therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory, and there unending him. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming, Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
Open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, Father, as your Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And come, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often and you who have not been here long. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have fallen short. Come, because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. I send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We who are many are one body, because we all share one bread, one cup. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.